Hey, Kitty, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. And I am very glad you are here. It is time for us to get ready for the party. Wait, okay, what party? Do not tell me that you forgot about the party. Okay, I definitely did not forget about the party, but remind me again just in case. Remind me again just in case. It's the party. We are doing Christmas in July today. <gasps> We're celebrating Christmas. I was just testing you. Okay, well, please tell me you mailed out all the invitations, right? Uh, well. <laughs> Actually, never mind. It does not matter. You're here. All these people are here. We are all here. And that's what really matters. And together we are going to celebrate Christmas in July. And every time you hear the word celebrate, I want you to ring your jingle bells and maracas. Oh, Betty doesn't have any. We'll get you some later. Uh, we are ready to celebrate our Christmas in July. Woo-hoo! This is going to be a great party. I can't think of a better reason to celebrate than Jesus' birth. I can tell. I'm afraid some of you might be thinking that we're celebrating out of season. And it's true. Christmas comes in December, but there is wisdom to gain and fun to be had celebrating out of, oh, thank you, Jean, out of season. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in a totally different frame of mind, too. I'm not rushing to buy gifts for the kids. Okay. Wrap gifts for the kids. Attend concerts for the kids. Yes. I'm ready to celebrate Christmas in July. This is going to be fun. There is good news of great joy for all people. Jesus Christ is born for the salvation of the world. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful, verses 1, 3, and 4. This ranked number three in the hymn voting. Be afraid, say the angels in scripture. The Lord is with us. 
we celebrate <laughs> the birth of our Jesus, a Savior Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing together verses 1 and 3 of Angels We Have Heard on High. This is the time of worship where we typically sing a glory to God. And in excelsis Deo means glory to God. Let us sing. Let us pray. Holy God, we know that by your grace, the miracle of Jesus' birth is good news for all people in all times and in all places. Fill us with your praise so that we speak the name of Jesus beyond the Christmas season. In his holy name we pray. Amen. So, as we, go ahead, Steph, as we get to the readings, we're going to be hearing more about the angels who not only sang, but had a lot of work that they were doing. Is anybody feeling angelic? Do you need some wings? Is it just me? I do. Oh, you do, Kitty. You're a hero. I'm angelic. Yes, you are. Kitty, you're a hero. No, I don't really know how they go on. We're gonna, we'll figure that out for Sunday. Okay, okay, here we go, Stephanie, you ready? Okay, here we go. Okay. First, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to speak with Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The angel Gabriel said to her, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Then God sent an angel to Joseph in a dream. And the angel of the Lord said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife. Well, if I recall correctly, the angels were busy both after, before and after Jesus was born. They were sort of like both the pregnancy announcement and the birth announcement. So we are going to sing a song of the angels, number six in the voting. Hark, Sorry. Hark the herald angels sing, verses one and four. <laughs> I didn't turn my microphone on, but I know yours got on. <laughs> okay, I want to tell you the next part of this story like my colleague, Pastor Billy Jo Wicks does. And she tells the story of Jesus' birth in a very memorable way. And I know that we have jingle bells and maracas to celebrate, but now we need balloons. Balloons? Trust me. Plus, Balloons are super festive for a Christmas party, right? You mean like a celebration? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like a celebration. Should I pass out some balloons? Yes. Okay. Yes, they're right there underneath the tree. They're, they are not blown up yet, and it'll take us forever if it was just me and Kitty. Trust us. We have hot air, but not that much. Um, but it would help a lot if you could help us blow up some balloons. Stephanie, can you help Kitty with the passing outing? I know, she'll work faster just knowing you're coming to help. <laughs> Isn't it fun to sing those hymns? I just, you sound good, it's nice to sing them. Okay, good work. Hi, did you give Lisa a balloon? Okay, she got a balloon. Okay. Now, these balloons come with directions. You're so smart. So just don't tie off your balloon. You got to follow along in the story, okay? Are you ready, Kitty and Stephanie? Oh, sure. You got balloons? Yeah, hot air too. And hot air? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. After the angel visited Mary, she soon found herself getting a little bigger and bigger, and bigger, and 
just when it looked like Mary couldn't get any bigger, the government, in his wisdom, sent out notice that they wanted to count all the people, so everyone had to go. Go where? Go back to their hometown. And because Joseph's family was from Bethlehem, that's where Mary and Joseph had to go. And for anyone, this would have been a big deal. But with Mary being pregnant, it was an even bigger deal. Why? Well, when they got to, uh, to Bethlehem, they tried to find a place to stay, but they had nowhere to go. And they checked place after place. And each time they did, their feelings got a little bigger. The motels were out of room. Every VRBO and Airbnb told them the same thing. No room. And by this time, their feelings were pretty big. I put in two puffs that time. Okay. But before their feelings burst, one kind innkeeper found a nice, cozy spot for them among his animals. And just in time, because they had barely settled in when Mary's body decided it was time to let go. Right? The baby... Carter, is that you? It's John. No. <laughs> Excuse me. The baby was coming. It was time for Jesus to be born. And when the baby arrived, Mary looked around and her heart began to grow. <laughs> she saw her sweet baby wrapped up warm and snug and laying in a manger, and she felt her heart grow even bigger. And she saw the peaceful animals gathered around her baby, sharing their warmth, and her heart grew even bigger. But Mary did not let go of these feelings. She gathered them all up in her heart so that she could remember and keep on thinking about them. Let's sing Away in a Manger, number 277, if you're in your hymnals. And it was number eight in the voting. I'm thankful we're celebrating Christmas out of season with thanksgiving that God's love is always in season. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. I invite you to respond to Lord with your love is always in season. 
God of love, you've given us good news of great joy in the birth of your son, Jesus. Lift up our voices to speak his holy name in every season. Lord, your love is always in season. Creation repeats the sounding joy of your love. Stir us up to be good stewards that we will treasure this gift you've given us. Lord, your love is always in season. Lord, we know that Jesus is joy to the world. We pray for the people and places who suffer from war, oppression, and injustice. Lord, your love is always in season. Your little ones, dear Lord, are we. Trusting in your love, we ask you to heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Eric, Clarence, Stanley, Sue, Olaf, Mark, Rick, Dorothy, and those we name before you now. Lord, your love is always in season. We rejoice with Christians everywhere that Christ was born to save. Thank you for the faithful people who have gone before us, who live eternally with you now. Lord, your love is always in season. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ to be with you all. Please share a sign with each other. Friends, thank you for your offerings. Uh, we give to gifts, uh, excuse me. After Jesus was born and the angels spread the word, people came to see him. The shepherds paid their respects and sometime later the wise men arrived with gifts. We give gifts to Jesus too as we are able, our time and talent and treasure. Thank you for everyone who has given a gift today for the Little Free Pantry. There are more gift tags back there if you're interested in participating. And thank you for your offering. It is needed and appreciated. Our offering response this evening will be verses 1 and well, we'll see, because I've gotten the number of verses wrong. <laughs> I think it's one in three of Joy to the World. This was number two in the voting. You guys, I think we're getting to my favorite part of the party, the food. <laughs> At Christmas, we have all kinds of special food. Communion is a special kind of food for us. Pastor Amy always calls it a feast in miniature because even though it's small, it's mighty. This meal is the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus instructed his disciples, which includes us, to eat this meal together and to remember him. The Lord celebrates with you and also with you. With you. Joyfully lift up your hearts. We joyfully lift them to the Lord. 
Let us celebrate with thanks and praise. It is right to celebrate with thanks and praise. It is indeed right and a good and joyful thing to celebrate with you, Lord. We gather together as your people to celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who has redeemed us, set us free, so that we might live eternally with you and all people. After a meal with his friends, Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread, giving it to the disciples and saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, holding it up for all to see. Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this cup all of you this cup is the new covenant poured out for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins so in celebration of jesus's birth resurrection and the promise of eternal life with him we pray that the holy spirit and trust that god is with us now present in this feast unite us with christ Unite us with one another. Unite us for the sake of sharing the gospel message. Let us unite our voices now as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, we celebrate your gifts to us. Our Savior Jesus and the gift of this meal shared at your table. Thank you for blessing us with your love in all seasons. Amen. Our announcements tonight are, uh, I think, Vicki, are you doing the crafts or the quilt raffle? So uh, it's one ticket is a dollar and six tickets for $5. And they have beautiful quilts out there. And if you love any of them, put your, buy some tickets and get one. They're raising more money to make, make, get more batting. And where are you donating those quilts to? They're Lutheran quilted World for Relief. Lutheran That's World Relief. awesome. Yep. Uh, the lift trip leaves uh, next Sunday uh, after Praise in the Park. So come and see our kids at Praise in the Park on Sunday. They're very excited to go. We're going to Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I think that they would love to see you there. And that's also Praise in the Park Sunday. So bring your sunglasses and whatever else you need there. And then all of the tags that were on our tree today are going to benefit our little tiny pantry out front. So if you brought stuff, thank you so much. We have a lot of people who use that little pantry, people who are elderly and people who are homeless, and uh, we really love having that ministry here. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. And the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. We are going to sing the number one song in the voting, Go Tell It on the Mountain.